Nigerians across the country are living in fear. This is amid terror threats from enemies of the state. Nowhere seems safe, as parts of the country previously thought to be safe have been placed on high alert, as intelligence reports suggest that terrorists have gradually infiltrated states beyond the north and may be planning attacks. From insurgency to banditry, kidnap for ransom and needless killings going on across the country, concerned Nigerians say the country has never had it this bad. A question on the lips of many concerning the worsening state of insecurity is what moves would government make in coming days that will, as a matter of urgency, address the situation? Joining us in the studio is security consultant Oladendi Ario. Good morning. Thank you for Good joining morning. us on TVC Breakfast. Thank you for having me. What's going on with our national security? Did you see the BBC report? Yeah, I saw the report. I watched that um, video clip several mm. times. Mm. Why? Because for me, what our intelligence should have discovered mm. and given to government to mm. assist them in coming up with strategies to counter the terrorism mm. and other um, issues that we're having mm. had to be done by BBC, mm. an independent press organization. Yes. Instead of the government to applaud and appreciate them, mm. they started painting them in bad colors. The mm. question is, did they know so much before the clip was released? And if they did, why didn't they act on it? The, it's the same um, uh, five and six mentality of doing things. Mm. Instead of facing the substance, the issue is not being made the point that uh, they will be sanctioned mm. for celebrating banditry. In what way? Mm. They exposed those people. They were some of them. We didn't know them before. We, didn't, we couldn't see them. I couldn't say what. They brought their faces out. Mm. They got them talking, admitting to the evils that they had committed. There was one who said he couldn't remember the number of people he has killed. All right. Yeah. What else do you need to look for that person and they prosecute him? Mm. All right. We have joining us uh, via Zoom, uh, principal partner Zoom Lens Security Solutions, Dennis Amakri. Uh, can you hear us, Dennis? Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Now, let's quickly uh, get your reactions to recent developments with regards to uh, the threats uh, that was, or let's say the intelligence reports that came out over the week, uh, last week, saying that uh, there were going to be a series of attacks across the country. And we saw that as a result of that, schools have closed. Uh, we saw uh, that uh, the uh, Senate went on recess, emergency recess, and they were also calling for the president to do something as quickly as possible to address this, or he risks being impeached. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, you see, um, we have been playing around with a snake in the house. And that snake is turning around, you know, biting everybody down. And um, I think um, it, it is really sad that uh, the managers of our, uh, of our government, especially, especially the legislature, is, is, is just playing around with this. Because I don't see why, uh, when we are in such an emergency, they are going on recess. In fact, I've known that there are certain situations where they cut off their recess and come back to the office. You know, these threats are all over the place, and it's engulfing us. And um, uh, security agencies, the military, police are overwhelmed because of their small number. You know, and um, we we are playing around. Uh, play politics with it, actually, because um, if you look at it, instead of facing the real situation, we are busy campaigning uh, to, to, to become governor or president or whatever, you know. So I think uh, the political class have to wake up and then, of course, do something about this now. Now, um... What do you say about um, what uh, Adams uh, said about forests being occupied by bandits around here, around Oyo and Ogun forests? That's, um, for me, it's no news. Mm. We've had the experience of people being kidnapped, mm. and then when they came out, they, they came out to, to tell the world mm. what they went through and who and who kidnapped them. 
I can tell you for free that the road from Ibadan to Ijebode is no longer passable to anyone because some bandits from Mali and Niger, they have encamped on the entire axis. Nobody can pass without getting um, violated. Now, it has happened in Ogun State, in Ekiti State, or Shun and everywhere. We've had series of uh, kidnap cases, abductions, and all of that. I don't now know what we need to know that it's high time for intelligence to go in there and be specific in identifying and isolating their locations so action can be taken against them. But unfortunately, the reverse is the case here. I thought when, when we paid so much for Mikano um, to Canada. fighter jet, to Canada. To Canada. Yes. Uh, fighter jet, that it would be maybe in, in 30 days, there will be breeders. But what happened? Where are the aircrafts now? Well, it's mm -hmm. a jets, the uh, government has said, uh, are not supposed to be used around here. They're just um, specific to the Northeast, that you cannot use it outside of the Northeast. That's the agreement Nigeria has had with the, with the American government. With the American government. So they cannot use them outside of that. But that does not mean that you cannot get other weapons. Mm -hmm. You cannot get other artillery. You cannot even use this anti-tank, um, even what they call, um, I forgot the name the Americans were, are using against uh, the, um, the Ukrainians. It doesn't mean that you cannot get any other material or material as they use in military mm -hmm. terms to, to, to combat these people. Mm. But the point is, if you need anything, there's a lot of money devoted oh. to it. Why have you not gone to get them? You can use helic helic helicopter gunships, which can go to forests. There are, uh, there are unmanned warfare um, equipment mm -hmm. that I know are available. Right. Some call them drones, others call them by other names. They don't need anybody to follow them. Mm -hmm. to program That's using them. technology the now. Technology yes, is just there. Technology. They will spot light the people that you see carbon, carbon detection or whatever and know that, okay, these are the people. And in seconds, they will be So done why are with. we not using that? Maybe I should throw that question to Dennis Amakri. He might have it's an answer. He's not in government. <laughs> Perhaps he might have an answer. Dennis Amakri, are you still there? I am with you. Right. I'm with you. Now, I'm sure you are listening yes. to the conversation in the studio. We, we have all of this, but it seems we are not moving in on, on, on these uh, persons. Why, what, what is wrong? What do you see is wrong? Why are we not moving in on them? You know, like uh, the people in the studio are saying, uh, they are wondering what is going on. We, 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 we were expecting the Tokanos, and when the Tokanos came, uh, nothing has happened. Uh, there were some excuses. And of course, after the excuses, there is no more excuse again and stuff like that. You know, but as an analyst of this security situation, we discovered that it is not just the equipment or it's not the people because you have, you hear some people say, oh, the uh, terrorists are more, uh, carrying more sophisticated uh, weapons than the Nigerian army, that is nonsense because Nigerian army is one of the most, you know, uh, um, trained and most uh, strong army that we have on the continent of Africa. So what is happening? And results of analysis came out that this particular problem is political. It is political. Some politicians are playing politics with the security situation, and I can tell you some of them don't want it to end. You know, they want a situation where it will continue. They don't want it to end. And then, of course, uh, the whole uh, lucrative economy that goes on with this kind of situation is what we find ourselves in. That so, is, that, that, if I may um, cut into your conversation, that is a weighty allegation. allegation. If you look at reports, uh, it says that between January and June this year, about 6,000 6, persons have been killed. And you say people are playing politics with people's lives? Yes, people are playing politics with people's lives, especially the politicians in the legislature. I'll to what you, end? You say there are a lot of trillions, trillions of naira has been spent. You know, how many, how much actually went to the security agencies and the military? 
you know, because when you find out, you find out that the money did not seep down, you know, and I think they need an audit. They need a serious audit to find out what is going on. I know that some generals were arrested, you know, with a large sum of cash and stuff like that, but we cannot continue to play the ostrich. Why are we not concluding or wrapping up this particular event or incident that is happening in the country? It is worrisome. Store of duty. They say that's one of the one of the problems. Store of duty. <laughs> that the person goes is goes there when they 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 they, they, they send you there, you are there to make your own money and leave. So what do you say to that? Well, it's no longer a secret. Just last week, there was a new media report <laughs> that they were, uh, that they were to, indicted to... for sharing 100 million received from, from kidnapped victims. Mm -hmm. And we just had this thing, and nobody is doing anything about it. If you look at the military budget mm -hmm. since 2015 to date, mm -hmm. it runs into trillions of naira. Mm -hmm. And it pains because Nigerians are not getting value for their patrimony being so shared. And you, it would not be wrong to say that those who are benefiting from all of this crisis are also part of the reasons why it's not coming to an end. I remember at that time that Tukano was going to be purchased, they said they had to declare the bandits and, uh, as terrorists and, and kidnap, before they could be given the equipment so that they can attack them with those ones. Mm. They did the legislation that brought that to be after so much rigmaroling at the end of the day. And I've been wondering where sovereign nation, we know our problems. Why are we hugging our problems? Why are we entertaining our problems and kissing our problems instead of going after them? Because we fail to take the battle to them in the forest. Mm. Now, they have been so emboldened, they are now coming to town. And it pains that Abuja, a seat of power, that's supposed to be fortified, the most secure place in Nigeria, has been so bastardized now, so much that, as we are talking here, 80 legislators, they have left Abuja. And out of that 80%, Another same thing have left Nigeria. Mm. But when somebody said they went on research, it wasn't on research, they, they escaped. They ran. They ran <laughs> away. Mm. So we shouldn't so call it research. Let me just tell you yeah. all of this impeachment or no impeachment, they are all stories, tales by the moonlight. Because it won't that, happen. It's nothing is going to happen. We will go on this way, and there will be more disasters, there will be more killings, more kidnappings, and more attacks. But I would like it or not. From bombing the train, those guys made over a billion naira. So they become empowered and enriched to buy far more sophisticated weapons. They have a goal, they have objectives, and they are inching towards the objective. What Whether we like goal? it or not, Autumn said it, Jefferson just said it, Hubert Dajuma said it, that there's a plan, okay, to let them overrun Asorot and take over government. The way we are going now, I won't say it's impossible. They attacked a train, so many people are taken away, and we are playing. Uh, cashier and uh, gambling with the people's uh, human lives. From there, they threaten that they will take the president and the uh, air fight. Are they not moving towards that direction when they had the temerity to attack the elite unit of the Nigerian army, brigade, uh, brigade mm. brought together mm. for the purpose of protecting the president? Now, they've been decimated. And it's unfortunate that it never happened. The last thing they did last week was to attack a whole barracks. I mean, what audacity! Right. Let's it's, get... It is very painful um, uh, what is going on. But we need to know, we need to know what is the end of intelligence and what is the beginning of action. Have they even defined it in, uh, in this government? And there's a place where intelligence ends. Right. There's a place where action yeah, begins. Actual, have they been able to determine that? These are the things that we've been seeing over the years. And nobody seems to be listening. Because how well, uh, how would the quality of your intelligence gathering mm. will determine your strategies, with which you will confront the enemies. Mm. But in this case, it's been like a last affair thing. And as we said earlier on, friend with meet security chiefs. How many meetings have they had? What has come out of it? Nothing. I no longer listen to all these things because I know it's just, the next one will be like the last one. And nothing will happen. In the midst of all of these things, we see that president leaving the country to go and talk about security, 
no, in, no, in, 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 a, in a Liberia. Mm. Do you give what you don't have? Mm. I've been studying uh, global peace and security in the last six months. At the, at the, I've been looking at why is the world the way it is? Using Nigeria as an example of a country that cannot manage its security. And of course, the Ukraine um, uh, Russia crisis, too. You see, the UN have become so lame mm. that the, 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 the UN is just there collecting animal subventions and allowing one uh, overbloated man with ego to just wake up one day and say, We must go to war. And I say, for every war that you are going into, either matrimonial, national, or across the border, you are destroying people. You are destroying assets that have taken years to accumulate. Absolutely. Imagine, I mean, they, they thought they would just go to Ukraine with a knock on the head. And I asked myself, where would this war end? Is it when they've wiped off every Ukrainian on the surface of the earth? Or when they've destroyed everything that Ukraine has built over the years? Mm. So when you look at all of these things, you, are, you begin to wonder the quality of human beings managing power across the world. That's why I said that before anybody gets to any office of authority and power, they should undergo psychiatric evaluation. Mm. Otherwise, the world will see worse moments than what we are facing. Right. Let, let's, get back to let's go to Amakri. Amakri, uh, do, you, do you think that the governors also have a role to play? For instance, you have a majority of the governors from the same party. Couldn't you envisage uh, a scenario where they can come together, actually put pressure oh, on the, the centre and say, look, we have failed, Mr. President. We are not living here until you bless us with security. Mm. And that, they have done nothing. They, 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 they have not put pressure. I mean, we've seen the case of the lawmakers. And you know the lawmakers are not going to go anywhere because they are PDP and uh, they are a minority. They, don't, they can't garner the numbers. They were doing it just for symbolic purpose and for partisan, for partisan uh, uh, scores and credit and all of that. But, but the, uh, when you leave, put that aside, what of the governors who are suffering this heat and they are the party in government? Uh, well, thank you for that particular question. Because, you see, one thing we don't know about governors is that indirectly, they control the legislature. Because most of the legislators that are there came from the governors, you know, and the answer to the governors. In fact, when the governors want certain things, they call their legislators up, and then, of course, they'll support them. Now, what I don't understand is why we've been talking about, right from the last uh, uh, administration, we've been talking about state police. Why is state police not created. Mm. And remember, it is not the executive arm of government. It is the legislative arm that is supposed to amend the Constitution to allow for other police organizations to happen. We have only one police organization. In, uh, in, in the United States, they have almost about 18,000 18, police organizations. Those for the different of course, even others that uh, uh, you, you find out um, are. Dennis mm. Amaki trying to. Right, Dennis Amaki yes. trying can to. You, can you, can you uh, explain that? Perhaps you might want to yeah, give yeah, further yeah. insight on what he was you, trying you to know, express. In, in times past, I was at the forefront of advocating for state policing. Mm. But when I saw a state here in Nigeria that recruited sportsmen, Catered them, sent them to an event, and then they couldn't even feed them while the event was going on. Those who came back post event now to demonstrate and demand for their dues. Mm. Now imagine the same state having the license and the liberty to recruit men, train them, kit them, and arm, arm them. them. One month, two months, three, four, five, six months, they couldn't pay their salaries and the monuments. What mayhem! Are we focus, I mean, are we imagining those people will unleash on the society? So not all the states are qualified in terms of financial strength now to fund state police. No, no, they, they cannot fund the state, state police. What they need to do is put the heat on the center and say, and say as a collective, this is what we demand. Mm. And this is what we must get done in order for us to be secure. But even the the monthly dole 
I call it do now that they collect from Abuja. Mm. How security votes? Security void, God bless you. How accountable have they been in letting us know what they've been doing with it? Yeah. And that is the challenge. We must also understand that the, the, the governance at this government at the state government level is nearer the people. Okay? And they should have been a lot more concerned. And you are asking yourself, why are they not concerned? And until we do away with the security vote, we say carry over from military era. And then as I've been expanded, so that in some states, I understand some great billions monthly, and does not impact or reflect on the insecurity state of their individual states. Mm. People still get kidnapped, ransom still get paid, some still get slaughtered, yet nothing gets done. But we must talk about um, strategy and then how we need to get out of the situation we have found ourselves. Unfortunately. Hold, hang on, hang on, calm down. <laughs> now, the government came up with the strategy of, okay, banning, you know, motorbikes, oh, that no. this is what, you know, these people use, you know, to cause mayhem in the various uh, locations they go to. Perhaps that way that that would resolve the crisis. But if that is not going to be the solution, what then is that will help Nigerians? Because Nigerians are living in palpable fear. Um, I call that fire brigade approach. Because bandits are using motorcycles, we are banning motorcycles. Because they threaten to attack schools, schools were shut, shut down. down. It's reactive. They <laughs> said they are coming to attack churches. Churches were advised to close down for 90 days, for three months. Those are reactive ways of doing things. No um, well-organized society or community we respect to run like that. Mm. It's not going to work. And that's my position. Motorcycles preceded all of these crises. I grew up seeing vendors riding mobilets. And of course, Vespa followed before the present day was that we now see. And so, if all of those years, it didn't become issue. Why don't we ask ourselves, how did we get to where we are? Mm. And we are where we are because of the lack of the will to attack the problem right from the board. Before, now, before the journey, now left the bottom. And we are where we are. I mean, I'm not going to sit here right. and tell you that I don't think it will be impossible for these criminals to abduct our president. All right, we'll that continue this. Day. Yeah, we'll because continue they, this they had the infantry we need to, we need to, to take attack his uh, advance uh, party, took right. off some human beings. The we need to take time, a break. They went after the brigade. <laughs> we'll continue this conversation because I'm certain a lot of persons want to understand why you take that position. I will explain. All right.